Greetings and salutations. This is Akirishin. In this video, I will be featuring the Yakovlev Yak-3 Russian fighter. I was asked about this uh, particular fighter in one of the comments to a previous Yak video, but at the time I had not unlocked this aircraft, so I am happy to be able to bring this to you now. This aircraft is currently armed with three 20 millimeter cannons. There is a 23 millimeter cannon that can be researched, but I do not have the XP to do that yet. Nor do I have any of the uh, airframe or engine upgrades at this point. So we are roughing it, folks. I have gone with my standard fighter upgrades, including Control Surface Adjustment 3 and Lightweight Airframe 3, both of which are designed to increase this aircraft's maneuverability. Likewise, I have gone with the Improved Radiator 3. Uh, this aircraft I believe has a six second uh, boost. Claims to have a good boost, but six seconds, as I've mentioned in uh, previous videos, is uh, not very strong. So I do equip the improved radiator so that I can get what speed boost I have back up as soon as possible. Uh, this aircraft is not a high altitude fighter. It is most effective in low altitude maneuvering combat. To that end, you can see that the optimal altitude is only 1100 meters. Airspeed optimal airspeed is 320 kilometers per hour. So it's not a particularly fast aircraft and it is not much of a climber. Uh, because this aircraft is equipped with cannons, I have gone with the high explosive ammunition for the uh, high crit chance. Like many fighters, this aircraft uh, is prone to catching fire, so I have equipped the automatic fire extinguisher. I've gone with the first aid kit, uh, which as I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, I kind of go back and forth between that and the automatic engine restarter. Uh, and either option really is perfectly fine. There are pros and cons to each. I, I just go with the first aid kit because when my pilot gets injured, it is very difficult to hit enemy targets. You'll notice that uh, when your pilot gets injured, the reticle goes from a very tight circle to a much uh, larger circle, and you can still hit enemy aircraft, but it is just much more difficult. And of course, I've gone with the heavy duty control services uh, skill. Uh, the other day, I did get in a, a dogfight uh, with a very maneuverable Spitfire, and I was able to outturn that aircraft. So that's really nice to have that ability. I've also outturned uh, Japanese fighters uh, with these Russian. Uh, fighters. So again, just very nice to have that capability. Pilot-wise, I only have one skill point in this pilot. Uh, therefore, I have gone with the uh, fire duration and damage reduction uh, skill. Uh, once this pilot is further uh, skilled up, I would switch to the uh, aerobatics expert 
and aerodynamics expert skills, again, just piling on the maneuverability on this aircraft. I suppose one question would be that uh, given that this aircraft is always already very high in the maneuverability category, and if you look at the specifications, that seems to be pretty much maxed out. So I suppose it's a logical question to ask whether uh, at some point you have diminishing returns on maneuverability and it, it doesn't pay to increase that skill. Uh, I really don't know the answer to that. Uh, so, but it's something to think about. This is the aircraft's uh, summer paint scheme, winter, desert, and marine, which I, I kind of favor the marine. Usually not a big fan of the marine paint schemes on planes, but I, I do like it on these Russian aircraft. fairly small plane. You know, it's interesting, you see the um, the gun sight there. I've been listening to a uh, an audio book uh, called The German Aces Speak. And essentially it's interviews with various different German World War II German aces who survived the war. And one of the things they talked about is that the Russians used to uh, cannibalize their aircraft once the uh, German aircraft had been shot down to get their uh, sights, which they would then put on their own planes. And oftentimes when the Germans would examine Russian aircraft that had been shot down, it wasn't unusual to see uh, sights on the aircraft that had been uh, painted. So there was somewhat of a, at least during portions of the of World War II, where the Russian aircraft maybe were a little bit behind from a technological standpoint. All right, so let's uh, go into a battle here and see what we can do with it. Okay, so we have drawn the northern bridgehead and we're going to go for the garrison first and then Cover maybe head over to this enemy, command center which I'm sure we'll have some resistance to. One thing I want to point out with regard to the airstrips uh, now this is a smaller plane in this icon, but many times uh, the airstrip will have a larger uh, plane, more like uh, looks more like a bomber. And when you have that uh, larger airstrip, you once you have secured the airstrip, and then after that, once it is unlocked, you can actually heal your aircraft. Pilot, get ready for action at that airstrip. So I've been in situations where I've been down to almost no health at all and been able to get completely healed back up, get all the damage to the aircraft repaired. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic. So I know many of you know that, but some of you don't. So I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that to you. Because I have seen uh, players, after we've taken the airfield and they're low on health, and uh, they, they don't seem to, to, to realize that's an option for them, so. You know, when you're taking on these air defense uh, planes it's if you can it's better to 
take on the fighters uh, because it can take a while to knock out one of those heavy fighters. So we're going to go over here and assist to try to get the command center. As you may recall, I'm a big fan of the command center because you know, once you can get those bombers deployed, it really, number one, it ties up enemy aircraft because they have to deal with those bombers. And also, of course, if the bombers actually make it to the enemy target, uh, they can really do a lot of damage. So we're using a combination of air brakes and extend flaps to gain maneuverability. After we take care of this fighter, we'll work on the uh, ground attack aircraft down there. But that can take some time, so while we're trying to get the ground attack aircraft, we do not want fighters jumping us. So take care of the fighters first, and then go for the ground air, ground attack aircraft. Now this is a good example of the maneuverability of this aircraft. We've got a Spitfire here, which is a very beautiful plane. I enjoy flying. Spitfires, but the yak can hang right with it. Now, anytime you can attack these um, ground attack aircrafts from the side, it's preferred because then you can avoid those uh, rear guns, which can be vicious sometimes. A lot of uh, pilots will really spec out for that rear gunner and it, it can chew through your fighter very quickly so if you can come at those from the side or from underneath that can be much more effective in, in avoiding their defensive fire so we've got a large group of enemy aircraft here I am looking for the lower health aircraft. They're going to be easier to deal with. So we're taking some fire, so we're maneuvering now. <clears throat> when you're having to maneuver like this, you want to focus on up and down. You don't want to just, <clears throat> some people just roll. That's just not really effective because you, you really haven't changed the bottom line for the aircraft shooting at you. Whereas if you can change height and really mix it up, it's going to be more effective. So you can see, even though a large group of enemy aircraft there, we, we hung in there for quite a while with that. So we'll go right in on that uh, airfield. Again, going for the low health targets. You know, they say if you're if you're in a group of people and you're running from a bear, don't be the slowest camper. And likewise, you don't want to be the low health plane. Because you are essentially the slowest camper in that equation. Line of thunderstorms is approaching. 
So here again, we're, we're hanging in there with this Spitfire. He is not going to outturn us. And I am holding down extend flaps and air brakes. And you can see how effective that can be. Occasionally increasing speed. You see there where he tried to slow down to get me to fly past him. And we were able to avoid that. That's it. There's no way to break the view now. You're on your own. Let's see if we can get up to this guy. He's too high. And we are the last stand against... Oh, uh, nope. Said we were on our own, but we're still in it. This plane is flying incredibly slow. Again, if you can come in with the side here. You're still going to get defensive fire, but it's not going to be as bad. Now, one of the things, a lot of times you'll see the enemy aircraft. Now, look how effective those bombers are. I mean, look how many of their team is focusing on those bombers. And vice versa, if you're, if you're on the receiving end of those bombers and you see, you know, half your team on those bombers, don't go there, right? Because... It doesn't take that many aircraft to deal with those bombers. You're better off somewhere else. We are taking fire. And that's it for us folks. We are out of the out of the war. You know, I've always thought that instead of the squall line, they should just say that, you know, the war zone is too hot for our rescue planes to come in. And, and the other thing I would love to see is that when you're shot down, that they actually go through a, a parachute um, scene. Uh, wouldn't that be awesome, right? You get shot down and they go through a whole parachute scene. And that would be fantastic. I don't know why they don't do that. Maybe maybe they'll listen to me and introduce that in the game one day. Remember, I, I said it. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like they are edging us out here unless something really changes. But we have taken down 12 uh, aircraft. Almost fully maxed out our status there. So we've done as much as we can at this point. I wanted to mention to you that um, World of Warships has announced that uh, they're beginning rank season 8 uh, on December the 22nd. I, I have in past season gone to rank one uh, with that, and I would like to do that again. So uh, I'm going to work hard to still try to bring you uh, content uh, for World of Warplanes, um, but uh, it'll, you know, I'm not going to have as much time to do that. But I do want to keep my commitment to make sure I have content still coming to you. Uh, and maybe even I'll throw in some World of Warships uh, content as well for ranked play. 
anyway, um, a defeat for the team, but a pretty good result for the Yak-3. You can definitely see the power of this aircraft, and, you know, just remember, we're uh, getting these kinds of results with an aircraft that is by no means uh, fully decked out. Uh, we have not researched uh, a good majority of the upgrades available on this for this plane. So 12 kills and 9600 plus uh, command points. Our uh, counterpart, the Spitfire, which I don't know if that's the uh, Spitfire we shot down or not, but I do see he was shot down twice, so we may have been one of those. Uh, but our, our counterpart, nine aircraft shot down. And uh, 12 for us. So... Subjugator, effective fire, flying start, and flying warrior badge. Of course, uh, rank one, and almost maxed out the uh, grade two fighter result. Just didn't get the star. And that, folks, is the Yak-3. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And if you get an opportunity to fly this aircraft, I think you'll uh, really have a lot of fun with it.